Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I worked on this art journal page last night and um, I really enjoyed it, but I realized it wasn't something I could do in the 20 minute time frame of my video. So um, I decided I would take the ideas here and put it on a card. So what I have is a stamped journaling title and it says, talking about our problems is our greatest addiction. Break the habit, talk about your joys. So it's one of those quotes that I pinned on Pinterest and I just really loved it. Um, and so I sketched out a um, dianthus flower and then I did some stamping with a large shrubbery stamp from Lost Coast Designs and then I used a little stamp to kind of fill in and I used colored pencil for all my color media here and other than the ink pad and I thought I'd kind of show you these techniques on a card so we could do it in a um, in a proper amount of time. So here's a card. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you how to sketch this first. I've got this piece of paper here. I'll just fold over my... Uh, um, I'll fold over my notes that I wrote there earlier and I'll use a pen and I'll show you how to draw the dianthus and what you want to do is start off with a um with kind of a pom-pom shade just a circle and I just do I'm colored draw this with your color pencil your pink colored pencil or a light pink or a light lavender or something so it'll blend away and I'm going to show you a tip here what I do I sign up for our seed catalogs and um, they're great references like if you just need to see the color of something or the shape of a flower um, I was looking at these um, dianthus are also called pinks just to kind of get the variegation and the, the shape of the flower and then I did my own thing with it so these are great to have for um, on hand for reference uh, file. So just keep that in mind when your seed catalogs start coming in the mail. And then within this big um, this big ball, you just want to kind of dot on some circles. And the reason I am dotting them again is so that um, so that I, I'm just putting little bits of color that I'll be able to blend away with my color pencils. I'm using color soft color pencils that I got from Oriental Trading, and um, a full disclosure, they sent them to me for free um, so that I would use them in some mixed media videos. Um, they, I'm using a set of 24 color soft pencils and um, they price, price match any online store. So if you find them cheaper somewhere else, let them know and they'll beat the price by 10%. All right, so now for the petals, uh, excuse the furnace, I gotta go turn the furnace down. Um, I'm gonna start with a dot in the center of each of them. And I put that dot in yellow, but you know, it just helps you get your um, get your petal shapes. And then just kind of, the petals go kind of like that. But I really wouldn't draw the ends of the petals too much because you you want them to be lighter, at least I do for this. Um, but just kind of go around and you're almost like dividing up the pie. You know, that's really what you're doing there. And you're gonna do that around each of the flowers. And I'm drawing darker than I would be with a pencil because I want you to be able to see it. I just keep going around. And I'll show you how to do the stem and the little leaves that are off the stem on the colored pencil piece. All right, so you just go around and that's how you draw all the flowers. And I started the colored pencil portion. I've got that right there. Let me move this out of the way because that's just in my way here. All right, I'm gonna bring over my colored pencils that I'm using and you'll want a pencil sharpener handy. So stamping is a really great way to add um, to add words to a journal page if you're not comfortable with your handwriting. So that's kind of what I want to show you today. All right, so what I'm doing here, because I want to color this fairly quickly, is I'm going to go into the middle of each of these petals and add some of this um, deep fuchsia color, which is a nice bright pink. I'm going to do that on every one of these remaining flowers. I colored a few beforehand just so that I would um, not waste your time watching all that. All right, uh, I'm going to go in with some of this um, magenta. I'm not sure if that was in the 24 set or if that was in my fashion color set that I had earlier. I, I bought a small kit of these pencils a while back to try them out and I was really happy with them so I was glad to have the larger set. And now, actually I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can really see this blending. And now I am uh, going to use this white to color firmly. You know what, I'm going to put a, uh, a firm mat under here because the, uh, the padded surface is not the best for using pencils. I'm going to color over everything and I'm going to try to drag some of that color out to the edges. I want that kind of variegated look so I want it kind of streaky so I'm just using my white pencil not only to add color but also as a blender. And you can see it's really muting the colors out but don't worry because we're going to add some more of the darker colors in. And go back in 
pencil pencils everywhere go back in with your dark I like this uh, this uh, bright pink you could do this in whatever color way you want they're generally reds and pinks but it's your journal it's your picture your card but the nice thing about an art journal is it really gives you a place to play with your ideas before you commit to them commit them to anything so you know you don't have to worry about making a mistake it's not like you're making a card for your you know aunt trudy and you don't want to mess it up so you're timid and then if something goes wrong you get upset if something goes wrong in an art journal well it's just an excuse to try something new to see how it works you know there's no fear in an art journal and i think that's um i think that's what the big big appeal for me is it's just you know i don't have to worry about a project coming out all right i can always turn the page i can always work on the back of the page it's uh it's not a big deal it's not no fear and i'm blending this right into the yellow that i put in the center i just put a little dotty yellow there and i feel like i need a little more definition on the edges of some of these so i'm going to just kind of scribble that in with this pencil here And you know the key is just to keep layering colors and honestly you can do this for a long time uh, keep layering and adding colors I'm working on um, paper tray ink stamper select cardstock because it's got a little bit more tooth than some others um, you don't want anything too super smooth otherwise you can only, you'll be limited how much how many layers you can put in there and I'm just gonna go over the yellow in the center of these to brighten them up a little bit not that they're terribly bright yellow centers in those flowers, but that's what I want in mine. Now I can go to define some of these edges because a flower with white edges can be kind of hard to see. I'm just going to go in and throw some magenta here and there near the edges just to kind of um, kind of break them up and also make it look like this flower is a little more full. Actually, this was the deep fuchsia, not the magenta. You know, so you're just giving the hint, your brain will fill in the details. You're just giving the hint that there are more flowers back in there. And I'm just, you know, I want them to be out of focus and really sketchy, so I'm just kind of throwing them in. Them in. So now I want to make, um, I'm going to make a stem straight down, just kind of like a stalk. Let me go in with a darker green. Actually, I have a better green than that. It should be out. I don't think it is, though. I think I, I think it was actually from my um, special edition colors here. And feel free to mix the pencils with what other. Or use the pencils you have, or free, feel free to mix it with um, with other pencils that you own. That's fine. They all play well together. These would go well with Prins Prisma colors. So I'm throwing in just a stem, and I'm throwing in just kind of the dark or the shadow edge with this uh, darker pine green. I'm just going to throw in a few leaves. Let's throw in four. And I'm also going to just kind of sneaky peek a little um, bits of green in there because each of those little flower buds would have a little stem attached to it, I believe. So I'm going to throw those in there. And then I am going to add some of this. Uh, what is this? Chartreuse over it, blending in with what I already have. You could do this as a one layer card if you want. Um, that's a great thing about colored pencil. But I actually am going to layer this on something because I want it to be a little more substantial. And also I might want to do some blending with baby oil and that will show, that might show through on the back. Um, so I'd want to have that on another layer. I didn't see a problem. It, it did, um, I could see it on the back of the uh, journal page I was doing, but um, that should just dry away and be fine. I did put a, my cutting page, my cutting board thing I have under here um, in between my two sheets of my journal just so it wouldn't uh, I wouldn't get a greasy page underneath so I just like to keep layering colors until I build up the amount of color that I need or that I want all right so I don't want to put I don't want to spend too much time on this because you're looking to see how I added um, added the lettering and the background stamping and all that stuff so I'm just going to skip ahead to that oh I will show you um, these are from the Dollar Tree they're little pointy q-tips and I've been to two Dollar Trees and they both have them and um, they're really great they don't seem to fray I'm going to show you I'll use a little bit on some of those uh, flowers to brighten them up isn't that cool just brightens them up it kind of dissolves the wax and makes them more vivid you know take more time than I am I'm just kind of very willy-nilly quickly throwing it in there and then I can I have a use the I, I would probably use pointy ends I would probably just keep one for each color because they don't seem to wear down too much um, 
but I, I like the way they blend. They blend there a little more juicy than using a blending stump, but you know, and they're only a buck for 75 of them, so certainly a, a good deal. All right, so I just want to show you that because um, that does make it a little bit more vivid. Now um, I want to stamp on a um, a title, and I want to show you these stamps I get um, often from the craft store or even Walmart carries them. They're a dollar, and I did see a larger, little bit, well, twice as big, and it was two dollars at Walmart, I believe, of the same fonts. I didn't um, I didn't pick any one up, any of them up, but I think I will uh, for my art journal. Um, and I've got this set here that was given to me by somebody, and um, I am going to use that to put. The uh, just uh, I think I'll put the word hello in here. I'll put it right here on the top, and um, I'm just going to be using this little set. This is a set by Plaid. It's probably quite old. Um, let's see, what year was that? I don't even see. 2002. So it's probably not a, not around anymore, but I'm sure you can find something like it. And I like that it's got an open font, so I can actually color in the letters like I did on my journal page. It's just a really nice size. Let's see if I can uh, do this backwards and not mess it up. <laughs> backwards and upside down and not mess it up. We're asking a lot here, aren't we? L, L, O. I'm not meticulous about cleaning my letter stamps. I have to uh, have to tell you there. <laughs> okay, and then when that dries, I will color in the little board, the little like sections probably. All right, now for the stamping, I'm gonna actually bring back my little scrap paper to put underneath here. And I'm actually going to need this because the stamp I have, I don't have a mount big enough for. It's this lovely background from uh, Lost Coast Designs. It's a shrubbery stamp. I'll put the links to the, um, the products I used under the video in the video description in case you want to check that out. So what I'm going to do is use a couple colors of Distress Ink because I don't really want them to be super de defined or vivid. So I'm using this um, Crushed Olive Distress Ink. And then I'm going to kind of tap on a little bit of vintage photo just to kind of dull it down a little bit. And I am going to stamp on the edge of my card. This is very awkward because it, let me zoom out. This is a, oops, that's the wrong way. <laughs> First video of the day, folks. It's the bad pancake. What can, what can I say? Um, and I'm just going to, I could kind of see through this a little bit. I'm just going to try to... Stamp this on without um, covering up anything important. But since I, you know, I don't really have any other sentiments put on there, I'll be all set. All right, a wonderful. I cut, oh, I like that. So I've got that nice little background there, and um, I want to add a couple more flowers. And I've got this old stamp from Stampin' Up. That is, um, I think, I was thinking it was a Hostess set, or maybe I don't know. It does. It's not a weird color. Usually their Hostess sets are weird colors, but. Um, I just kind of wanted to throw in some flowers there. They're kind of up a little bit higher that I can just kind of color in and tie in with my um, with the rest of my design. All right, maybe one more. Sometimes I have to look at it right side up to see what I'm up to, you know, to get a good idea. And I like to stamp things in threes, you know, just kind of keep the balance and um, what have you. All right, now I'm going to go back to my mat. I'm going to take the stamp off of it. That's one way to deal with those big unmounted stamps. All right, now we'll zoom in a little bit. Ooh, I'm always going the wrong way. What's up with me today? Um, or always. <laughs> I'm going to color in some of these flowers. I'm going to use the same colors I have been using to create harmony within my piece. So, and please, you know, and this is a thing, if you're new to art journaling and you're feeling like, well, I just, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start, it's so overwhelming because you can do anything, but I kind of need some guidance. Um, any of your techniques that you would use on a card, you can use in art journaling. Anything you would do on a scrapbook page, anything you'd do in painting or collage, um, those can all be transformed um, onto your art journaling page. I remember, that's what I loved about getting into scrapbooking, because I came from a painting background is that I could I could do everything I could use everything that I had you know I could paint my own background pages I could stamp my background pages I didn't have to uh, go out and buy much other than just you know cardstock I could use everything I had I already had some scrapbook papers that I bought for other projects so you know 
it was a very natural and fun hobby to get into because it encompassed so many things. And I think that's the same with art journaling is that you can use you can use whatever you have and you know any of the products that you buy for art journaling you can use for you know for any sort of artwork so I really like that I'm gonna add a little bit of this other purpley pink in here and then I'm gonna use my q-tip again just to smudge it out a bit Maybe a little bit of that darker green hither and tither and since I'm good that's a good thing about the uh, the baby oil technique is that I can just kind of scribble on my color and then spread it out. I don't have to, you know, spend a lot of time with my coloring because um, sometimes I like to. Actually, last night um, after we filmed Ask a Crafter, we filmed at night, which isn't a normal. So Kathy and I were hanging out, and I just did that journal page while we were gabbing. And um, you know, it's just it's so free. You don't have to worry that you're going like with scrapbooking. You know, you kind of work because you've got you know you want to make sure everything's archival and you've got photos that are precious. When you're art journaling, you know, you get, anything goes. You don't have to worry about how it turns out, which I really like. Nobody has to see it if you don't want them to. And I'm just going to go in and liquefy these pink flowers. Hasn't started snowing yet. I'm pretty excited about that. We were expecting a, uh, a big storm, and it kind of changed direction, so it's only going to be a couple inches, and it uh, hasn't even started yet. They didn't cancel school. It's, um... It's a wonder. And then if I want, you know, the well, you know, if I haven't put too much baby oil on or too much color, I can actually go in and put a little bit more. And if you wanted to do a one layer card, I'd probably recommend against using the baby oil. All right, and then something else I like to do to kind of give it a frame or a border is that I will um, use the edge of my pencil and I start with my lighter color first. And you could use your distress inks if you don't want to do this, but I kind of want to show you some different things you can do with pencils today because, you know, I know. I use them a lot, and if you run out and buy the stuff because I use it, I want you to be able to, you know, do a lot with it. Um, Oriental Trading has a large selection of Derwent products, but they also carry Prismacolor, which are a fabulous colored pencil. I really like both of them. Um, I have more Prismacolors than Derwents because I started using Prismacolors when I was a child. Um, so it's, it's, it's nice to know you have that variety. I think they have a set of Prismacolors, the 48 set, so you'd have a little bit more variety there. And with the price matching, you know you're going to pay 10% less than you would anywhere else. Um, anywhere you can find a lower price, so it's always a good thing. And then I'm going in with this darker green just to kind of, um, just to kind of fill it in a little bit. I don't think you can go wrong with either Prismacolor or the Color Soft. I like the Color Soft, and this is the thing. They also make, Derwent also makes a, um, a pencil. It's called Derwent Studio, and I have to say I'm not a fan of those. I bought a few open stock to try them out, and I don't like them. They feel very dry. Uh, the lead is smaller, is thinner. You don't seem to get as much um, product in the pencil. Uh, so go for the Color Soft by Derwent, I recommend, rather than the Derwent Studio. Um, of course, some people might, you know, that, and that's my opinion. You know, that's just my opinion, which I am sharing freely, but um, I just want to let you know in case you're trying, kind of on the fence about what, what to get. Um, and now for the word hello, um, I think I'm going to go with a completely different color, which is not what I usually do. I usually stick with the colors that I've been using, but I really like this blue. This is, um, actually, it's blue. It's called blue. <laughs> I thought it'd be like something fancy like Copenhagen or Star Dream Blue or something, some fancy name, but just blue. But to make it tie in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around so I can work on it a little easier. I'm going to add a little of this up in the sky, just like so, just to kind of give it a border and um, make it make it match and work a little bit more. And if this seems a little too bold for you, you can use your color, your um, your baby oil to blend it out. But I think I'm going to leave it because I kind of like that broken color look. So it kind of looks a little maybe like a Maybe like clouds or something. I'm just going to leave it kind of sketchy and broken because I kind of like that look. But you do what you want to. Or don't do this. Alright, so we have used the same techniques that we used on the art journal page to make a card. And to finish it off, I'm simply going to adhere it to this backing uh, paper. This is These are just the cards that I buy that are already pre-scored and have an envelope just because they're so darn convenient. Actually, I find the craft weight ones are a little bit more rugged. I wait for them to go on sale at uh, like AC Moore and then I just grab up the packages of 50 for $5 and they work. They work well for me. The craft is definitely more sturdy than the white or the cream. 
And there you have it, a quick card that we made in a flash um, and using some fun journal techniques. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.